Hello, my dear friends. Myself, Dr. Atul Nagpore, Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry, and today our topic is Werner theory of coordination compound. As you all aware that, in order to explain the nature of bonding and the structure of the compound, many scientists has put forward his own theories. But the significant contribution was given by Alfred Werner in 1893. in which he put forward his theory in front of all world and he showed that how the complex form and what are the features of this form complex but before 1893 the many scientists is also worked but the problem was they were not able to explain the characteristics of the coordination compound and there was a many a drawbacks and you should also keep in the mind that the werner theory of coordination compound is not is actually a non electronic in nature since the electron discovery was not there in 1893 the electron has been discovered in nearly 1897 by j j thomson so today our topic is werner theory of coordination compound and the most important thing is that he also able to explain the geometrical and optical isomerism in coordination compound and he was the first scientist who has given a non carbon containing compound which possesses the catalytic and the compound name is hexol and hexol is a cobalt complex in which hydroxide and the amine act as a ligand so now time has come to discuss the werner theory of coordination compound now what he did exactly he has taken a cobalt chloride salt and he reacted with the ammonia so what he found that the he able to get various compound and he was amazed that how a stable compound a cobalt chloride is stable compound ammonia is stable compound the two stable compounds are giving the next compound is also a stable now in order to get various kinds of coordination compound he had changed the molar ratio of ammonia here now if you see in the first complex we have one mole of cobalt chloride and we have six mole of amine ligand now what he did he has kept the metal and the amine ligand in this square bracket and you are aware that uh, this square bracket we referred as a, a coordination sphere or coordination entity right and interestingly he has kept three chloride ion outside the coordination sphere why he kept and what are the reason we discuss a uh, soon next if we take a five mole of ammonia now he got a uh, a uh, cobalt five mole of ammonia and the cl inside the coordination sphere and two mole was outside the coordination sphere now next if we kept x equal to 4 means 4 mole of ammonia now if you look at the complex number 3 and complex number 4 these complexes has the same chemical formula but you don't think that these are the same no these are one is cis and one is a trans complex and the fifth one if, if we kept a uh, 3 mole of ammonia now he got co and st by 3 a cl3 and the no cl ions are outside the coordination sphere but my friends the question comes here why he is keeping chloride outside the coordination sphere and inside the coordination sphere and that reason for that we will discuss now based upon his outcome basically he has reacted this complexes with very various reagent he performed various study and based upon that he has given the theory of werner's now these are the postulates of werner theory what werner says that every metal atom or every metal ion are trying to satisfy the two valency and the first is called as a primary valency and second is called as a secondary valency let's take one example here hexamine cobalt chloride complex now if you see here the chloride ion chloride ion which are outside the coordination sphere in this given complex he referred as a primary valency and the primary valency is nothing but the oxidation state and 
since it is ionic in nature it can also be named as ionic valency or anodal valency or principal valency and non directional in nature this is very important my friends non directional means they do not have any specific direction in the uh, space and whenever you need to represent the primary valency with the metal it has to always represent it by a dot line so metal m metal here is ligand so if you want to show the bonding cobalt and the chloride you have to write down a dotted line dotted line means uh, their a bond strength is weak and their distance is a large right and this primary valency now can be satisfied by the anionic molecule or anionic ion basically now the uh, molecule inside the coordination sphere now if you look at we have two spaces one is metal right it's called central metal ion or central metal atom and the next we have amine now if you look at the amine we have six amine and the ligand which are inside the coordination sphere now this is called as the secondary valency in the modern term the secondary valency can also be called as coordination and number here and we have seen that the primary valency is ionic in nature but this secondary valency is non ionic and non anodable in nature secondary valency is also known as auxiliary valency and the next is a directional in nature so let us take one example and just holding one complex of which have six ligand directional secondary valency non directional primary valency so let's imagine that this is a octahedral complex in which we have six ligand at octahedral space we have four ligand in the plane square square planar kind of things and one ligand we have above and one ligand we have below the meaning is that the secondary valency if you look at very carefully this secondary valency will have the direction perpendicular directions in the space however if you look at the primary valency a primary valency now i can keep it here i can keep it here or here or here meaning they do not have any direction but secondary valency has a direction in the uh, space and that's why they are giving the geometry to the given complex right if you take the geometry of this complex we have coordination number equal to 6 and hence the geometry is octahedral geometry because the uh, ligands molecules are arranged in a space properly in order to give the geometry to the particular complex right now the metal to ligand bond is a short bond and this is represented by the thick line we have seen earlier that primary valency is shown by dotted line the distance is large and here ml bond length is small and bond strength is more now this secondary ligand can be sometime anionic in nature can be a neutral in nature and rarely the secondary valency can be a positive also so these are all the oscillators so let's discuss now how he has uh, confirmed that these are ionic and non ionic in nature and how these molecule arrange in this space so while studying this fact what he did he has performed many experimental study and the sum i will discuss here me one of the study he has uh, performed this is called a cryoscopic measurement cryoscopic measurement and the second he performed a conductivity study and he measured the conductance of the uh, material and the next he performed the precipitation study by using a silver nitrate as salt right and the fourth he also calculated the magnetic susceptibility of the material right so this for so cryoscopic measurement is nothing but the measurement of depletion of freezing point of the uh, given compound and this will related to the 
number of ions in the solution second he find out he find out the molar conductance of the compound and from that we can able to know that how much amounts of ions will be uh, liberated from the particular compound and if we have more number of ions obviously the given solution will have higher value of molar conductance the third he did whatever the com compound we having now this compound he reacted with the silver nitrate and he find find out that how many mole of silver chloride to get formed and the next he did a magnetic values of various compound now let's discuss a step by step and directly first i am moving towards the reaction of this compound with a silver nitrate so let's uh, start discussion here now the firstly uh, he has reacted this molecule with excess of silver nitrate he reacted with excess of a uh, silver nitrate now when he reacted with silver nitrate he found that uh, these ions are forming so if i write down the here ions ns3 by 6 we have and plus 3 charge and afterwards he got a 3 mole of agcl and the nitrate will be there okay in the reaction now if you look at clearly in the first case we are getting a 3 mole of agcl now next if we again use excess of silver nitrate now in this case he got a following species ns3 by 5 and we have cl and this carry a plus 2 charge okay and here now we have a 2 mole of agcl clear now next again he reacted with silver nitrate in the excess amount and he got a following compound and s3 by 4 we have cl2 here and now we have plus 1 charge and he got a 1 mole of agcl so now similarly if you react this complex also with silver nitrate he got the same species ns3 by 4 and we have here a cl2 and now this contain a plus charge with a 1 mole of agcl afterwards when he reacted the last complex with silver nitrate in excess amount he did not get any number of ions no ions is formed and no precipitate of silver chloride has generated the meaning is if we are getting silver chloride into the solution meaning this cl3 are not actually there in a coordination sphere that means they are this cl3 ions are loosely bound with metal ion and this cl3 are ionizable they are reacting with silver silver ion and forming agcl right next we have here a cl2 now we have got two mole of agcl now we have one and one ion outside we got one mole of agcl but at last we do not have any cl ion outside the coordination sphere and uh, hence we do not uh, get a number of ion and therefore the last complex now we can call as a non electrolyte in nature rest having electrolyte characteristics now if i ask you that total number of ions in the first complexes so ions will be this is the first coordination sphere ion and we have three cl so total number of ions generated in the first complex will be equal to four four ions generated first and the three cl minus ion in the second one we have one ion and we have two cl minus ion so generated three ions in the third and the fourth total two ions will be generated total two ions generated and last we do not have any number of ion and this is called as a precipitation study so this is how he did precipitation study and based upon that he was able to classify 
that metal has a two valency this is can call a primary valency and secondary valency now if you wanted to calculate now the conductance of the solution obviously as i told already that conductance of any given solution will corresponding to its number of ions so the first first complexes will have high conductivity followed by third and this and this will be nearly the same and this value will be the uh, lowest so furthermore he has given many experimental proof and he demonstrated that how this complex form and how this molecule behave in the uh, solution now next we will see that how the bonding will occur in this kind of system he was also amazed that color of these complexes was a different let's say if you have a first one this complex is actually this complex is having orange to yellow color first complex orange to yellow color now the second complex was a purple in nature and if you take cis imagine this is uh, your cis complex and this cis complex will have a violet color and if you take the next is a trans complex this will, this will have a kind of a green a color so the optical nature of all the complexes was different first one orange yellow next is purple if you have cis complex of this type will have violet color and the trans will be have the a green color now i am showing you how the trans and cis will behave let's say this is a uh, my a complex okay and if we, if we have these complexes cis means what if the two ligands are the same these two will be a adjacent or will be having a close approximately and if i keep this two ligand opposite now this is a cis complex with coordination number 6 and this is the trans complex with coordination number 6 now if we have coordination number 4 right so for coordination number 4 a total two types of geometry are possible first is tetrahedral geometry and the next is square planar geometry afterwards he also uh, discuss how the bonding occurs in these a kind of molecule so let's say that uh, in the first let's take the first complexes uh, this is the first complex so we have cobalt and we have a uh, six amine ligand right so if i write down here amine ligand this is nh3 and this is we have nh3 and nh3 and again we have nh3 and nh3 right so these ligand as i told we have strong bonding but the ions outside the coordination spheres are weakly bound so i can keep anywhere here cl and here we have cl and we have here cl right so the uh, primary valency are satisfied by chloride ion secondary valency satisfied by the amine ion now if you look at the next complex now you can see very carefully the cl inside the coordination sphere that means this cl satisfy primary as well as secondary valency two cl two il satisfy primary valency in the next one the two cl two satisfy primary as well as secondary valency and the one cl outside the coordination sphere satisfy the primary valency now let's take this discuss this one now if you have a cobalt complex and uh, i'm writing here let's say we have amine ligand right and amine ligand now we have in this case we have five so i'm writing here five amine ligand four and this is five and next we have a cl right and a uh, two cl will be outside the coordination sphere and shown by dotted line but here this cl one cl now satisfy both primary and secondary valency and therefore this should be uh, shown shown by dotted and a thick line similarly if i take these two two cl satisfy secondary and primary valency in this case 
CCLC satisfy primary and secondary valency all together. So this is all about the uh, Werner's theory of coordination compound. Now, but he has explained the many fact, but the problem was he was not ab able to explain that why only certain element or metal form the complexes and why other not. He was not uh, also not able to explain the color, the optical nature and the magnetic properties of the complexes. But overall, this theory was very useful for coordination chemistry and this is a uh, is actually a milestone in the inorganic chemistry. Thanks for watching. If you have any question, please give me a reply.